second chance of your life Life is so sweet But I know that you always make beauty for my heart, eh? Don't wanna forget what takes for granted. Yeah, it's a beautiful life we live. I'm not gonna miss the moments like this. This is a beautiful life you give. You're the reason for every good day, every heartbeat, every day. to me the only one whose favor I seek the only name that matters to me yours will be the friendship and affection I need to feel my father smiling on me the only name that matters to me And yours is the name, the name that has saved me Mercy and grace, the power that forgave me And your love is all I've ever needed Yours will be the only name that matters to me The only one whose favor I seek The only name that matters to me Yours is the name, the name that has saved me Your mercy and grace, the power that forgave me And your love is all I've ever needed When I wake up in the land of glory With the saints, I will tell my story
You world ain't right, and you're wondering if things will ever get better. And you're asking why is it always raining on you? When all you want is just a little good news instead of sending them stuck out in the weather. Oh, don't hang your head, it's gonna end. God's right there, even if it's hard to see him. I promise you that he still cares when the waves are taking you under. Hold on just a little bit longer He knows that this is gonna make you stronger, stronger The pain ain't gonna last forever Things can only get better Believe me, this is gonna make you stronger Gonna make you stronger Stronger Stronger
show them who you are. Living water flowing through, God, we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with one deep desire. That's who God you and Peewee Church is going to um, come in and give you a little special.
That was fun. Thank you, Missy. And thank you, kids. That was great. Um, welcome to the Etna Green Church of Christ. It's so good to be together and worship and, uh, and celebrate Jesus Christ, our Lord and our King. It's good to be back with you. I was up just north a little ways last week uh, sharing with Camp Creek and their revival. Uh, it was a, a good week up there with them, sharing and encouraging them. Uh, today, this Sunday, is an important thing would be that at offering, we will vote on the property. In your bulletins, if you didn't, uh, everyone get a bulletin. Uh, to vote, you have to be a member and you have to be 18 years or older. Um, I have provided for you the information. I will cover that information at offering um, and what will all will entail. Uh, so, and there will also be time for Q&A. If you have questions, um, ask those questions at offering and I will answer them or an elder will answer them as best as possible. Uh, the long story short of it would be that we're looking for more space to share God's grace. And uh, so that's the mission and goal of that, and we'll, I'll happily answer questions in that regard uh, for the property. So we'll vote, and you'll put it in the baskets. We're going to pass the offering at plate, and, the, and then there will be a couple baskets, and you drop that right in there. Um, all right. Important thing today, I was planning on uh, helping Charlotte Slaybaugh move from five to whatever. We're going to bump it up because of the rain that is coming. I looked at the radar and there's this big gigantic thing coming through. And so we're going to bump it up from two to four. If you're in Etna Green and you need a ride over or you don't know where you're going, meet me a little bit before two here at the church and we'll head over to Charlotte's. Um, and then if you're just in Bourbon, just go ahead and go to Charlotte since she lives right there on 331. Uh, big house next to the uh, uh, Church of Christ in Bourbon. The United Church of Christ. There's a difference. But uh, anyways. Uh, all right. Let's hear. Uh, that's that. Sunday school stuff is still going strong. Uh, but just keep an eye on the bulletin. But the big thing is meet at, uh, in Bourbon at 2 if you're going to help with that. Uh, so we have a lot of fun things coming up. Go ahead and check on all that in the bulletin. Uh, but it's so good to be together uh, and worship and fellowship. If you please stand for the reading of Scripture. Here at the Etna Green Church of Christ, we celebrate Jesus Christ. He's our Lord and our King and our Savior. We are reminded of uh, psalms from long ago that lead us in our worship of Him today. You, God, are my God, and earnestly I seek You. I thirst for You. My whole being longs for You in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen You in the sanctuary and beheld Your power and Your glory because Your love is better than life. My lips will glorify You. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I lift up my hands. This morning is about making much of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our King. We're going to join together in prayer, and we'll shake hands, and then we'll sing some songs together. Please keep in mind that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and we celebrate Him because salvation comes in the name of the Lord. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you so very much, and this day is a day that we dedicate to you, uh, Lord, and each and every day. And this time together, as we've, uh, as we've told one another, hey, come to the church building at 1030. God, this time is all about you. Celebrate Jesus Christ, our Lord and our King. I thank you for the young children that have already blessed us beyond measure. Uh, Lord, we are, uh, we are with them, and we are joyful, and we sing and share with them the wonderful words of amen. God, we love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. And all those who are happy, Lord, we say amen. I greet one another, please. If you remain standing as we continue to sing this morning. Yeah. 
Our story is full of God's grace and his mercy, a showing of patience with his disobedient children and an unfailing love. Let's be encouraged and reminded by what Paul says in Romans. In Romans 6, he writes, But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. How amazing is his grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. i 
way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Oh, God, 
Good morning. 1979. Prior to that, and right here in the sanctuary, just graduated from Manchester College, ready, ready to move from North Manchester up to South. We were moving from our that we rented for three years. You need to ask Ruth to the house was. I'm that to you, but you would think I was. In when you get a chance, ask Ruth how. Towards the end of the move, we had, there was just one last thing that I needed to get trained. And Ruth and I had bought a, a couch, a sofa bed from the furniture store down in North Manchester. I was going to need two things to move that sofa bed. First, I was going to need some help. Ruth is not near the physical. It was going to require to, <laughs> to help move that. Aunt Charlotte, my, <laughs> I didn't know her well enough then to, to, to but I was also going to convince Ruth's cousin, Steve Slayball, to help me out. So uh, he, he volunteered for me. And my friend knew 1979 four wheel drive pickup. And let me tell you, Lindsay, my father in law. Fancied himself to be at the forefront of technology. I don't think he had the first color TV in Etna Green, but I think he had the second. I'm pretty sure he had the first remote that went to a TV. And when I mean a remote, this is one of those. The early remotes weren't infrared. They, they had a cable that ran from the remote to the TV. But it was the cable was long enough that Gene could sit in his chair and control that TV. And life was good for Gene Lindsay. But he also had a CB, a Citizens Band Radio, and he had one of those in his 1979 Ford pickup. Any of you ever, do you remember what a, a, a CB is? It's the way forerunner of, of the cell phones today. And just coincidentally, again, I had asked Steve Slaybaugh to help me out. Steve was pretty good at using a CB radio. So we, we went to this furniture store in North Manchester. We loaded up the sofa bed, uh, headed out north of North Manchester and got on State Road 13. And as we were rounding the first big corner of State Road 13, we could see a semi truck in the distance in front of us. So Steve grabs the, uh, or turns the on button to that CB. He grabs the microphone and he says, Breaker 19, you got your ears on, 18 wheeler? And sure enough, we could, we could hear a little, uh, a little bit of the conversation. And, you know, I, I can't speak to speak like Steve used to, but I was very impressed. The two of them just kept going on and on. But our reception was starting to fade, so I, I think the, the, the semi truck was gaining distance on us. So I, you know, I had a, I had a load, and I didn't want to be speeding, but I, I, I started going 60 mile an hour, and you know, it just didn't seem like we were gaining any ground at all on this guy. It, it, the, the back of that trailer just looked like it was further and further off in the distance. So finally, I looked over at Steve, and I, uh, I motioned to him to give me the microphone, and I, I uh, pushed the button, and I said. Hey, 18-wheeler, how fast are you going anyway? Well, I don't know enough about CB etiquette. That's not a question you want to ask on, on broadband. That's... So there was a long pause. But then finally, the, uh, the truck driver said, I'm doing 55, the legal speed limit. And my reply was, well, you better get out of the way because that trailer you're pulling is going at least 70. And that's the way it is, isn't it? We all have trailers that, were, that are behind us, and we think we're pulling them, but more than likely, we're, we're, we're pushing those. We, we, we don't have the control that we think we do. And each of us has a trailer that's 
full of sins, it's full of guilt, grudges, maybe even regret. And we, and we need God's help and we need Jesus to help us lighten that load. One of my favorite actors is Samuel L. Jackson, and he does a series of commercials on TV right now for Capital One Debit Card. And I know what he would say if he were here this morning. Now I ask you, what's in your trailer? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as humble and imperfect followers of Jesus Christ, we know that we carry the burden of sin in our daily lives. Even so, we have so much to be thankful for and so many reasons to rejoice. We give you thanks for the sacrifice of your Son on the cross and for the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Thank you.
what benefit did you reap at the time from the things that you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We remember the resurrection. We remember being free of sin and death. Please share with me in 1 Corinthians. For as often... At this time, uh, we will have our vote for the property. So we're very clear. The property, uh, here's my house is right next door. The property that we're voting on is adjoining property directly north of my house. Um, and it's a small house, uh, but it's a, about a, a quarter lot, I suppose. I, and I have for you on the ballot just uh, some information already of what you can expect. Uh, the first thing is that if you're voting for approval today, and if you're voting, you're 18 or older, and you're a member of the church family, if you don't have a, um, if you don't have a ballot, I suppose, Dick, there's extra ones out there. Would you get one? If you just uh, need one, if you didn't get a bulletin, and you need one to vote, uh, Dick will pass one to you and make sure everybody can vote uh, who would like to. Uh, the first thing is that if you vote in approval. Uh, the next steps are is praying. Uh, we should hopefully have been praying this uh, last week, but you're going to bathe the property in prayer, uh, keeping certain that throughout this journey together, we are trusting in God and, and keeping our faith in Him. Uh, also, you can expect that we will do a love offering to purchase the property. Uh, and whatever beyond that love offering uh, or special offering in the coming weeks we will then take a loan out for the remaining balances. Also, um, you can expect some work days that we would smooth it out and then uh, and get it ready for uh, just basic getting ready to use it for parking even. And then any other income expenses, we can expect perhaps maybe $100 or $150 in additional expenses each month. It's $80 uh, to have it just the house hooked up for the um, Etna Green Town Bill. Uh, or at least that's what Barry told me last. So uh, so those are some of the things. The immediate need would be that, uh, I don't know where some folks parked this morning, but we would have immediate availability for parking. We are voting on the land, not necessarily the house. I am totally open for any wild and crazy ideas that you want to do with the house. A year and a, uh, a, year and a half ago, I took the elders, and we went to First Christian Church in Warsaw, and we sat in a room, and the first question that I asked them was, what was going on three years ago today, and how has it improved, and how is it better, or how is it worse? And what we came up with was a very uh, wonderful realization that three years ago we were having financial difficulties. Three years ago we weren't sure... Uh, on a couple of different things and what we were doing. And our kids' ministry was needing some reorganization and some help. We had a lot of things going on. But, but compared to the present and where we were, what we saw was growth problems that were extremely good, good problems to have, problems that, uh, it, you know, if we got the property that we could shove the kids way back in the house and not hear them. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not, that's not good. Um, but... Uh, we were in the um, uh, we were in the room and we were talking about where we're at with things. If you were to go down to the Pee Wee Church, they're all out there right now. But if you're a volunteer in the Pee Wee Church program, you know that we've had to go to two different rooms downstairs to accommodate the growth we've had uh, in children from the ages of uh, uh, a little over a year to four, and that uh, we continually have uh, young children being. Uh, born in our church family, and our and our nursery is uh, continually growing, and so we have children's ministry. But at the last children's ministry meeting, we uh, we counted up and we put on a board, and there's a whiteboard down in the basement, and it was completely filled with kids' names, and I counted it up, 
this morning, and uh, just the people who have come through our doors and just all of that, we have over, um, over 60 people, 18 and younger, in our church family. That's a good problem to have. And I've been, I've been in numerous churches. This is a very rare problem. It's a sad problem that, that it's not a problem for other churches. You are now at a church who averages far below 40 years of age. Our largest demographic of people is less than 18 years of age. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. And what I would say to you is, would you like to see it continue? On behalf of the leadership, on, on behalf of the leadership, on behalf of, uh, of them and, and for myself included, I believe that this is an important next step in the future of the Etna Green Church of Christ. I'd like to place something on the back side of this building called a multi-purpose center. It doesn't happen if we don't have more place to put our cars when we show up. It doesn't happen if we don't walk in faith and trust. Now, I, want, I, I need to tell you how, the, uh, uh, how things are going so far. On Good Friday, I was approached by our neighbor, and he knew that we wanted the property. We left the leadership meeting a year and a half ago, and we said the first thing we need, the first domino to fall, is we need more property. From that meeting, we approached them, and they said they, wanted the, uh, they would sell it to us for $50,000. There was other property that came about, and the leadership wasn't comfortable with purchasing it. This was the ideal property that we wanted. And $50,000 was, was just not what we thought, and so we just kept it a matter of prayer. On Good Friday, the owner showed up to my house, and he said, are you still interested in the property? I said, yes. You know, trying not to you know, reveal too much of my joy. And I said, well, how much are you thinking? And he said, $20,000. I try not dropping my jaw. That was thirty thousand dollars. You know, I tried to keep a good, you know, not give away my tell, uh, but twenty thousand dollars. And so I walked through the property, and I and I just forecasted for him. I said, "Well, this is not my decision. It's a congregation decision, and I need to talk to the leadership." And blah blah blah. So leadership was in agreement. We knew that we have to take it to you because this is an important decision. We don't want to just go about it lightly. And so I forecasted it for him. And what he then told me, I said, the leadership wants it. And I shook an agreement with them, $20,000. Uh, we came back and we figured out our plan of action. The plan is that if you approve it, we're going to go with Ball Auction Realty. And they will handle the purchase for us. I called the owner to let him know that's what we're doing. And then he started saying, well, we would like, or I would like $30,000 out of it. And I said, well, we shook on 20, and let's go with that. And he pushed further, and, and he tried offering up an agreement of 25. And I said, at this point, it's the leadership, and they're going to handle it from here. And so I'm going to trust that our leadership is going to do the very best they can to get the property for $20,000. But if you'll read what I've put here, the purchase agreement is from 20 to 25,000. So what we're asking for is... Uh, uh, approval up to 25 and don't go and tell the neighbor oh yeah we're good to cover the 25 we're gonna you know if he's gonna deal with us shrewdly jesus tells us that um that we're okay to be deal shrewdly in this world though we need to remain innocent as doves so i feel as though my character is intact um uh, but i won't defame another person but that's the situation we're in so that's where the twenty-five thousand number it comes into play uh, the eldership is an agreement that, while not ideal, we're, we are willing to go forward for 25. So, are there any questions? Have I covered it thorough enough? Uh, I know it's not probably the most comfortable place to ask a question, but please do so if you have any concerns. Um, nothing for the moment. We're voting on the property. We're thinking about expansion. We're thinking, um, I'm open to creative ideas for how we might use the house to fulfill God's mission for us to put love where love is not.
Yeah. I would have to move a couple things around in my portfolio, but <laughs> <laughs> we understand 20,000 is a lot of money. Um, leadership wouldn't bring this to you if we didn't believe in it, see it as important for future growth. Thank you, Amanda. Who's ready to vote? Okay. Anybody? Anything else? Okay. All right, so how it's going to happen is... Uh, if you are going to vote, mark yes or no. Yes is you're in favor of the above. No is, um, I guess. Um, so the basket will be for the vote, and the offering plates are for um, uh, for your your cold hard cash. So all right, let's uh, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we uh, love you so very much, and we thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Lord, I truly see it as an opportunity uh, from you, gifted by you. Uh, God, I ask that you would help us to trust in you and walk faithfully. Uh, Lord, may this vote um, uh, be your will, and, uh, and whatever comes of it, we trust in you. And we know, Lord, that uh, even if it's perhaps a no vote, uh, God, that you have great things in store uh, for our church family. Lord, we want to trust in you and walk faithfully with you in all things. We love you so very much. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Children's churches dismiss. Money needs a vote too there, bum. Call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, my feet lay through, and there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours. You are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. All right, we will find out the results at the end of the sermon, right, Mike? Maybe if you can, all right. Okay, and Rich will come forward and let us know. Um, I am uh, beginning a new series uh, that I'm calling Why Church? And the intention of it is uh, that uh, we did a big push for Easter. We were hoping uh, for new folks to come. And, and so I have a kind of a two-fold approach to this series. The first is, uh, that I would fully hope that if someone were curious about the church and why uh, why be involved in one, why connect with a church, that uh, from this series uh, people would be encouraged and to know why uh, we've all decided to be a part of the church. And so uh, part of it would be evangelistic, that we would reach out to people and let them know, hey, this is the reason why we've decided uh, to connect together as a church. 
Uh, because from the outside looking in, it's kind of a strange thing. Why do people give up their Sunday mornings to come hang out together and, and do what we do and do what we do together through the week? And so uh, a part of it would be to share with people why the church is so important to me, but also to us. Um, so I would invite that if there's something that uh, within the next several weeks is kind of like, hey, this is the reason why I've decided to be a part of the church, um, that you would share it with me um, and that uh, maybe perhaps come forward. Or if you're not comfortable with doing that, I'll just show up at your house and I'll video record your conversation. Um, not NSA style. I mean, I'll let you know I'm doing it. Um, and so we can uh, uh, so we can reach out to others. And the other thing would be, uh, the other side of the series would be that it would just simply encourage each and every one of us and just kind of jog our memory of, oh yeah, that's the reason why I'm a part of the church. Because I think we need that too personally sometimes. Sometimes being a part of the church can be rather difficult, uh, frustrating. Uh, someone might bug you and get under your skin and it's like, why do I do this church thing? And, uh, and hopefully this series will be a reminder of, oh yeah, that's why I'm a part of the church. And so I, I hope that, uh, that all of us will leave encouraged uh, through the next several weeks together. Uh, this, uh, this morning's message is going to come out of Matthew 20, if you want to uh, go ahead and turn there. Uh, Matthew chapter 20 and verse 1. Uh, when, I was in, when I was in college, freshman year, I was a part of a vital and critical organization that was so uh, incredibly wonderful to be a part of. It was called the Outhouse Football League. Now, the Outhouse Football League uh, was originally started as a tackle football intramural league on the campus of Great Lakes. And uh, when you win the championship at the end of the year, it was a toilet seat that was uh, spray-painted gold. I mean, the, the award is rather prestigious. And so the Outhouse Football League, and I was a part of it freshman year, and the first uh, and the teams were divided up. There was an actual draft. I mean, this thing was very thorough, and it was well run by my buddy Jason. And uh, and so I was the first pick uh, of the draft. I mean, I was uh, about as tall. I I haven't grown much this way. I was a little bit bigger this way, and it was tackle football. I was a valuable asset in tackle football when there weren't any pads. I was hard to tackle. And so I was the first person off the board. Well, it was the first game, and I was uh, I caught the ball, and I started running up the field, and I saw this little mangy-looking person, not much to him, and he comes running up to me, and he, he tries to tackle me. And, uh, and I tried, you know, knocking him down to the ground, but I, I didn't really try very hard, and he tackled me. And I got up, and I looked at him, and I, uh, and I said, you know, who are you? And he said, well, my name's Mark Walter. And I said, I underestimated you, and it's not going to happen again. And so that mangy little Mark Walter, you guys, I don't know if you know him or not, but, uh, and so I, Rich, I'm just picking up, but I said, I underestimated you, and I won't let it happen again. And uh, I took, uh, you know, and next time I got the ball, he comes running at me, and I just plant him into the ground, and I score a touchdown. And it was the glory of my life, you know. But that was the first and only game of tackle football in the Outhouse Football League. There were other guys, not me, that kind of ruined it for everybody else, you know, after we were planting these little Mark Walters in the ground, you know. And so uh, the next year when there was a draft, I went from being the first person off the board uh, to uh, maybe like in the last, uh, it was in the last round of, I was like not the last pick, but I was pretty close to not being anywhere close to the first. How things change when it becomes flag football, I don't really have the hips. You know, you have to be shifty. I'm more of a, you know, get me from here to there, straight at it. You know, you get in my way, I shove you. And, uh, and so, you know, flag football is not my strong suit. Uh, I share that with you uh, for a reason. Uh, but before we get into, into that, Jesus, he has this phrase, the last will be first and the first will be last. He says it in Matthew 19.30. We live in a culture and a world that is not, uh, that fails to understand and comprehend that the last will be first and the first will be last. 
uh, in the culture that we live in and that we find our way through and in the workplaces that we find ourselves in, we understand very much that the first will be first and the last will be last and the one that, the one that is in second place is the first loser. Right? These, are, these are the things that we sort of have come accustomed to in our culture and our world. The way, that, uh, the way that our employers work is that if you want to advance in your career, that you need to better yourself, you need to uh, get more education, you need to better yourself in such a way that you're a more viable candidate to be uh, promoted or hired. This is the culture we live in. The first will be first and the last will be last. If you snooze, you lose. If you got second place, you're the first loser. This is the way we've been accustomed. This is the way we think and our minds have been trained. And so when Jesus presents to his disciples, and I, and I think to us as well, it's the same equally sort of uh, uh, disturbing lesson of the last will be first and the first will be last. Last, first, first, last. you got to make sure I say that right. Tell me, tell me if I say it wrong. And so, so Jesus and his, uh, is sharing with his disciples something that is completely outside of them. In Matthew 19, we read about the rich young ruler, the guy who is well-to-do, and he says, you know, I followed the laws. I'm rich. I got everything going for me. And Jesus says, hey, you got this figured out, man, but what you need to do is sell all of your possessions and give to the poor, and then you can come follow me. And the guy leaves sad. Well, then Peter, he chimes in, and he's, and he's saying, hey, look at how great I am. I've left family. I've left my house. I've left everything to come and follow you. And Jesus says, yeah, you've gotten it. Truly, I tell you, this is in, at the end of 19, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on the glorious throne, you have followed me, will also sit on the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother, wife or children, or fields for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. And so the rich man comes to Jesus saying, look at how great I've been and look at all that I've attained and I've followed everything to a T. And Jesus' commentary on it, I think, is in Matthew 20. He tells a story. Because I think still even today, to wrap our minds around the last being first is rather difficult. It's a story. It's a parable. And Jesus is going to share a particular truth through it. He says in Matthew 20, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius, that is, a day's wage, for the day, and he sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. I'll just pause right there for a second. These workers in the marketplace are not doing a lazy thing. These people are gathering where this is, this is where they would go to be hired for the day. They're looking, if you were an employer looking for day laborers, you would go to the marketplace. And so these guys are just waiting, looking to be hired. All right. Um, uh, verse 4, he told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay, pay you whatever is right. And so they went. And he went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon, and he did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? And this, this is the important verse. Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. And so these guys are hired, and they have an hour of work to do. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his supervisor, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came, and each received a denarius, a, day, a day's wage. And so when those came who were hired first, they worked all day. They expected to receive more. It's a reasonable expectation. But each of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. 
These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the, of the work in the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. I, uh, I spoke to the uh, great theologian this week, Richard Eckes. Uh, my dad, and uh, and I, he was just asking me what I was preaching on this week, and I said, uh, Matthew 20, and he goes, oh, the parable of the vineyard. And he goes, I hate that parable. And I was like, oh, why is that, Dad? And he goes, well, you know, it bothered me. It bothered me so much to think that those guys that were working all day got the same pay as the guys that worked for an hour. If you were talk, uh, speaking with labor unions today, I think they would have the same response of saying, there's no way that that's fair. There's no way that that's right. My dad, he wants, he wants it to be fair. He wants it to be equal. And he, was, he just said, I hated it for years and years and years. I never understood it. But then, he, and, but then he said, but suddenly one day, I fell in love with it. He said, I finally understood it. He's like, you see if I'm right. I was like, okay, what do you think, Dad? And he said, you know, I fell in love with the passage when I realized that I was the one that was hired at 5 p.m. I'm like, Dad, you got it. You know, come preach the sermon. The last will be first and the first will be last. Friends, when it, when it comes to this parable, I think Jesus is making an incredible point about the graciousness of God and the kindness and generosity of God. We aren't to grumble against God, but we are here together standing on equal footing of God's gracious generosity. When we think about what's being given, the vineyard worker is God, and He's going out and He's trying to find workers for His kingdom. And what God is doing is, is he's, He has work so important that He's going to go out all day long trying to find workers for His vineyard. You know, and I, I've heard this passage used in other ways, but I simply want to think about the workers. From the standpoint of, you know, the guys that are hired first, they're probably, you know, they're probably muscular, they're probably pretty awake, they had their morning coffee already. The guys that were hired at the first of the day were probably the guys that you would want to hire first if you had a job to do. And the guys at nine, they probably had themselves together, they were just running a little behind that morning. And then the guys that come in in the afternoon, there's probably a few defects. They probably have a couple extra ears or something. Who knows? And then as the later day, the day goes, and there's these workers, and if you imagine, it's not just one employer trying to go in and find workers. There's been other people trying to find workers throughout the day, and everyone has passed these people over. Then suddenly, all that is left at 5 p.m. is literally the riffraff of which no one wants. And people have looked over the entire time, the entire day, and they have been literally unhirable people. They have nothing really truly to offer. Yet in God's kingdom, I think the point is, is that even the least of these have a place in the work of God's kingdom. Everyone has a place in God's church. And so friends, I didn't realize how long that I was just taking, and you have things that you want to go and do. Or wait, what time? Holy cow, is that clock right? Let's get right to the point. The point would be this. I wanted to have it all built up big. But I simply want to do this. We are all on equal footing, standing on God's grace.
the mistake that people make about churches today is they put people on the pedestals. Pedestals of which we do not deserve. Because all of us are together as five o'clock workers invited into God's kingdom to do His work. And we stand together on the equal footing of God's gracious generosity that He has dealt so kindly and graciously to welcome us into His church. When I think about church, it is a place to share His grace. And that's what this is all about. That the looked over and the forgotten and the people that are just sort of kicked to the side have a place, even with those who are worked long before. Now the whole heart of the passage is about Peter thinking too highly of himself. And he would one day be recruiting Gentiles, people who are far off, filled with sin that would be welcomed into the kingdom. And Peter would have to wrestle with that. Can the, can the gospel go to the least of these? Jesus came with the mission to seek and save the lost. He came with the mission to bring all people in, to welcome them into the kingdom of God. Friends, it is my constant prayer that the Etna Green Church of of Christ would be a place where we share the grace of God and no matter what might be wrong with the five o'clock workers, they'd be welcomed into the family of God to to do the work uh, that the vineyard worker or vineyard employer is calling them to do. Friends, I want to be with you in this journey. And I agree with my dad. I'm the five o'clock worker hired on last minute and I get a gracious gift to be a part of his kingdom. Friends, you are all a part of that. And so I have some questions written in the bulletin, but you can read them. The simple point is, how do you care about the least of these? And how how do they have a place of prominence in our own community and the people we care about? Today, we're going to do something for a kind person that has devoted her life to the work of the Lord in Charlotte. And we're going to help her move some boxes. To me, that's just a small picture of God's kindness and generosity to help another person. Friends, that's what we're called to. I'll wrap it up. We're curious about the vote. Let's pray and um, enjoy our day together. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And I thank you for the grace that you've bestowed upon us that we can be welcomed into your work, into your kingdom. Heavenly Father, we love you so very dearly, and we ask that you would would guide us as a church family. When I think about why church, God, it's because of your gracious generosity and your kindness that you've shown me. God, may we, um, uh, from, uh, from these people and from Christians throughout my life, God, when people think about the church, May it be about your grace and your generosity. May they think about how loving you are because of how loving we are towards them. And we love you, God, and we thank you for all you do. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Will you stand with us? Lord, I need
You got a not, you got a answer for us, Mike? Yes, we have a, a yes vote for on the property. So, praise the Lord. Uh, I do have a couple of uh, <laughs> I do have a couple of uh, prayer concerns that, that were put in place in the offering plate. Uh, Kelly Keel is in the hospital with pancreatitis. And she's being transferred to uh, IUSB Medical Center in South Bend, but the doctor there doesn't really know what to do to help her. Or, and then uh, Jim and Janine Keel uh, Webb have a grand, a great great grandchild that was born preemie and uh, will be in the hospital for a while. So uh, she need, don't need our. His name is Joshua Dale Shue. Um, there are several other things on our prayer list. Yeah, obviously, as you look through there, there's names on there uh, that continue to need our prayer. So let's pray. Lord, we praise you and we thank you that we can uh, bring our concerns and our needs to you, that we can, uh, Lord, just uh, know that you care about those, the names that we bring to you and the names that have continue to be on our prayer list, or we, we ask for them. And Lord, we praise you. Uh, we ask that you'd bless us in this week, this week to come. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Okay. I was like, is that just how it drives you? That's awesome. <laughs> 